I'm Billy. I want to introduce to you a new credit card, Crystal Radio, that I made out of genuine credit card, the expired ones, and it tuned by moving and sliding the second credit card with the second coil. Let me show you the circuit diagram. It's a conventional, simple, diode-driven crystal radio. The only difference is we have two coils, L1 and L2, and depending on how they move, they will create a different inductance. So we can fix the capacitor and still tune the radio. Since variable capacitor of good quality is harder and harder to find, so this type of variometer or variable inductance crystal radio is something you can make yourself easily out of conventional parts you can buy nearby. A few people ask me how the diode, what type of diode should be used. Well, a crystal radio is important to use a diode of a very low voltage draw. Conventional silicon type of diode have 0.5 to 0.7 volts of voltage draw. But the crystal radio diode, like the germanium or scotchy diode, only have 0.2 volt voltage drop. That means more energy can be used to push your headphone to sound better. Of course, you, if you are very close to a transmission station or you have a very strong and long antenna, you may try those silicon diodes like 1N4948. 40, 40, However, most of us who are living far away from the transmission station or do not afford to have a long antenna, we need to get the best diode. Like 1N60, 1N34A, I'm using the 1SS106, which is super. The other consideration of what type of diodes will be better depends on the impedance matching. From the input side, you are matching the impedance with your coil. So the different tapping position of the coil, you need to try out to match your diode, see which one is better. On the output side, you need to match the impedance of the headphone you are using. Some of the diodes have output impedance of very high, like 10k ohm or even 100k ohm. Others have very low output impedance, like 1k ohm. So they like the ISS. 1SS106 that I'm using has a very low impedance of around 1K ohm. So I can easily drive my 500 ohm moving coil, uh, not moving coil, moving iron uh, headphone and still give a very crystal clear audio signal. Besides that, you can also try to use the step down transformer. Some of the 100 volt to 12 volt transformer or 220 volt to 12 volt transformer is a good choice to step down the impedance to match with your headphone. Or you can buy the more professional uh, Bojan T751 or there's a new one created by China, KBP02. Uh, you can get it from some of the forums like the Radio Bot Forum. I'll put these links in my description. Let me show you how the variable inductance crystal radio works. It works by having two coils, one on different frames so they can move apart. When the two coils do not overlap, like they are more than one diameter of the coil apart, their total inductance, if you connect them in series, that is the head, connect to the tail of another, and you measure it from the head of the first coil to the tail of the second coil. The total inductance is uh, the sum of the individual inductance. For instance, in this case, L1 is 140 mil H. L2 is also the same, so we just multiply them by two and it becomes the total inductance 280 microhenry. But when the coils start to overlap, depending on how much they overlap, the area of the space they overlap, and how close they are when overlapping, and the winding direction will come up with different figure. If you see this diagram, L1 and L2, we assume that they are overlapped and very close together. 
less than one millimeter apart and completely overlap, stemming the two circles of the coil just coincide with one another and they are winding in the same direction, that means the winding are all clockwise or all anti-clockwise on both of the coil. In this case, besides adding the inductance of the two coils, 140 mu times 2, we also need to consider the thing called mutual inductance. That is, when two coils are close to one another, they will influence the second coil to induce a second inductance called mutual inductance. So in this case, L2 will create a mutual inductance in L1 called ML1 ML2 and L1 will create a mutual inductance in L2 called ML2 L1 and together they may even increase the total inductance measured up to 476 microhenry according to my measurement. There's a very complex formula how to calculate the amount of mutual inductance. If you like, you can Google it. Google mutual inductance and you'll get the formula. Bottom line, it depends simply on the individual inductance of each coil when separated apart and the area of overlap, the bigger the area of overlap and the closer they are, they will have the biggest mutual inductance. Then depending on whether the winding direction of the coil, clockwise or anti-clockwise are the same, they will either add on to the total inductance or subtract it from the total inductance. In this case, we have the same winding direction, both clockwise or both anticlockwise. Then we get a very big mutual inductance by addition. But if we change the winding direction, move and not flip over the other coil so that it becomes anticlockwise, while the first L1 is clockwise, then what happens is the mutual inductance will be subtracted from the total in individual inductance of the, the coils. So it created a total inductance of a very small number, 86 microhenry. And this is how our crystal radio can tune to different frequency by overlapping the two coils in the same direction or different direction and controlling how much of the area they overlap. So if we take the lowest inductance that we can create out of these co two coils, which is 86 microhenry, to the largest when we overlap them by the same direction, 478 microhenry, we divide them together and get around 5.5 times. So this is the range we can get from this setup. But is this enough to tune over the entire range of the medium wave broadcasting AM radio station? No, because our lowest frequency is 540 kilohertz for the lowest band in the MW medium wave frequency band. And the highest one is 1650 kilohertz. So if we divide them, we come up with 9.3 times the range is 9.3 times. When we compare these 9.3 times with the range that we can get from our setup, our variable inductance crystal radio of 5.5 times, we can only tune up to a bit more than half of the frequency range. So what's the solution? Solution is simple. Just by connecting a capacitor of different value, two different fixed capacitor, one for the lower band, one for the higher band, then we can tune the entire medium wave radio frequency spectrum. This is the value of C1 that you need to choose to sat satisfy the frequency spectrum you want to turn up to. So I choose 200 PF uh, for the lower band of the frequency spectrum. You may need to drop it to 100 PF if you want to tune to the higher band. You can add a switch to switch between the two capacitor so you can easily flip between high band and low band. But for my project, I try to make it simple, reduce the amount of connection and switches. So I just make a terminal and a wiring block so you can change the capacitor to tune the different range you like. The number of turns on L1 and L2 is not so important as long as you find a matching fixed capacitor value that can fulfill the frequency range you want to cover.
So I put in 50 turns on each coil. You can drop it to 30 turns if you like and increase the capacitor to uh, around 300 PF. It will be good if you have some meters like inductance meters to measure the micro Henry of your coil and the capacity meter to measure the capacitance of your, your capacitor. And then use the formula, the frequency calculation formula. You can check whether they fit to your frequency range. There are a couple of frequency calculator for LC circuit. I have posted that in my description. You can go there and punch in the value and you'll find whether they match your frequency range. Let me show you how to make this crystal radio. First step is to create the credit card and cut it into shape. So there are patterns I put into the link in the GitHub. You can download the PDF file. It's a one-to-one -one matching size of the credit card. So just clean it out, stick it on top of your credit card, and do the cutting indicated by the red lines. So make sure you don't cut it all the way to the center. You need to leave a circle at the center and the wires will need to wind on them. Otherwise your coil will be too small and you will not be able to create enough inductance to tune to the uh, medium wave crystal radio frequency. Warning for the kids, don't just pick up any credit card from your father or mother and cut it this way. Check with them. Make sure they are expired credit card only. Make sure you erase all the credit card number signature before you use it. Otherwise, you may be exposed and someone may be stealing your credit card number. So you need to cut out a slit of one millimeter wide so the wire can fit in during the wiring. So you need to cut two times to create a slit. Once that's done, remove the paper patterns and there you are. You can Next, we need to uh, wire the coil, wind the coil. So you can use, the best is to use the list wire. I'm using a 12 strand list wire, that means in one thread there are 12 different copper threads inside. Uh, because of the neighboring effect, uh, the highest frequency tend to only rise on the outer surface of the copper. By winding the wire with a multiple smaller wire insulated within, it creates a maximized surface area. So the higher frequency will run over there, thus reducing the resistance. You will do as fine with uh, the regular magnet wire or laminated wire, but you need to choose a diameter of uh, the wire of at least 0 0.2 millimeter or even better 0.3 millimeter otherwise it will be too thin you don't need to worry about the winding direction uh, right now because you only need to wind two coils and then depending on how we fit the cards it will be either on the same direction or the different direction just use your normal practice of winding if you like to wind in anti clockwise wind in anti clockwise or else compromise, doesn't matter. Just make sure you want enough turns. Uh, I recommend 50 turns on each card. Uh, depending on how, many, how much wire you have, you can reduce it to 30 turns, but don't go lower than that. Otherwise, there may be insufficient inductance for you to uh, run the radio. The way we are winding the car is called the spider wire. So if you notice, there are only odd number of parts in the cut that we cut out. It must be odd number, otherwise the wire will all go on to one side and it will reduce the uh, effectiveness because there is not enough separation between each turn. So by making use of the odd number of slits, the wiring parts, uh, on the first one, the wire will be on the upper side of the cart on the second run, second turn, the wire will be on the bottom side of the cart alternatively, like that. So by doing that, it will lock the wires together tightly, it will not get loose easily. Also, it will 
increase the distance between individual turns, thus making the wire, uh, uh, making the coil more efficient. The amount of energy loose will be reduced, and it will be much better. The, the, the coil resulting in this type of wiring will have a higher Q than if you just wind it all on one side. So how much force you need to wind it, just use sufficient force but don't use too much force otherwise you will tear off the wire. Uh, you, you, you don't want to hang them loose, otherwise once you finish wiring, the wire will come out and get loose into a bunch and it will be very, very dirty and difficult. You will catch dust, things like that. It will easily be uh, torn apart. So just make sure it's tight enough but not super tight otherwise it will tear apart when it goes through the hot and cold cycle of your weather. Let's connect the two coils in series. That means one end of the coil is connected to another end of the second coil. And then we test them. So we are using the uh, inductance meter. So when these two coils are separated apart, total inductance is 280 micro Henry. But when they are overlapped totally together, around 476 micro Henry. And when I flip one of the coil to the other side, it is getting the least inductance of 86 micro Henry. Next, we are going to create some wiring terminals. We will get it out of the electricity wiring block. Just unscrew it and get it out. And that is our wiring terminal. We will need to get uh, six of these so we can mount it on our credit card. Next, let's drill some holes to mount the wiring terminals. We need two holes for each wiring terminal. You can then mount uh, the terminal onto the credit card. Here's how it looks when all six terminals are mounted. Next, we need to uh, cut the second credit card so it can slide underneath the first one because they, we are going to build a, an edge on the up top and bottom uh, so we can guide the second cut and it can slide easily. We will be sticking some sticks on top and on the bottom to create a guide so the uh, second credit card can slide in much easier. We need to create a bottom cover out of a third credit card. Let's stick it at the back using sticky tapes so we can uh, remove it if we need to fix the wires. Now let's test if the second credit card can slide in and out easily. Notice in the circuit diagram in L2, there's a middle tapping point from the coil. So we need to find the middle turns, like turn 25 on the coil and solder a wire out of it. And then we stick it with tapes to make it secure. And then we need to solder a pin to the end of each wire because they are so fragile. We want to enhance it so when they are mounted onto the wiring block, the screws will not smash them apart. Now we can start mounting the wires to the terminal 
by following the circuit diagram. Let's test it out. I will open the case. When the two coils are separated apart, we have around 258 microhenry. And we slide them in in the and same the direction of winding. Slide them out gradually. We'll get up to the maximum of 263 microhenry. Then we'll flip the second cut to the other side and insert it again. This time, the inductance reduces gradually back to 58 or Michael Henry. Now we need to connect a fixed capacitor. I choose 200 PF uh, on the terminal block at the top so it can match with our tuning frequency. And then I connect the diode. I use one SS106 and I connect the diode to the middle tab. That means the connection between the two coils to, to match my impedance. We need to choose a 2000 TF capacitor, fixed capacitor, to smooth out the sound of the output. Now we need to close the bottom cover. Just use some double side sticky tapes. Let's check if the credit card can smoothly slide in and slide out. I have a digital cube meter. Let's use it to test the frequency range of my credit card crystal radio. I flip over uh, and then the frequency will change to the other direction. Naglabas ng executive order ang ang mayor at sinabi na hindi pwedeng uh, dumaong sa alan ng ng bakolod ang
and six. The masks will be delivered to your door. Primary and kindergarten students will get masks from schools later, so there's no need to register for them. Hi, I'm Lazy Lion. To fight this pandemic, don't hold gatherings or join large-scale activities. Event organizers should adopt contingency measures to postpone or cancel events or temporarily close facilities. The public should avoid crowded places as far as possible. Don't host or join gatherings with family and friends. Find an open space to stretch. Social distancing can help prevent the spread of COVID-19. These are the tips for you and me to prevent COVID-19. The Hong Kong English Poetry Competition is back. And the theme... So why question it and why not why not be open minded about it? Diba? So local leaders or local government or mayors. Pero sana sana sila nga. Sana sila na. No? Sana sila na. Ako kasi ano, no? Ano yan? Eh si Ding Dong, grabe ang ano niyan kay, ano? Talagang crush na crush pala ni Marian si Ding Dong. Kahit noong pa, unang kita pa lang daw niya, eh nasabi niya kay Tita Elizabeth Ramsey at nung nabubuhay pa. Mm -hmm. Si Tita Elizabeth ang nag, ano sa amin, nag-chismis sa amin. <laughs> mm -hmm. Eh kasi inlababo na si Ding Dong eh. Mm -hmm. Kay uh, Karel noon. Akala mo, di ba, sila na yung magkakatulo yan eh. Mm -hmm. And even Karel, Lab na lab niya si Ding Dong. Eh, si... Wala na naman si Tita Elizabeth. Wala na. Nasa heaven.
记得我自己二十几岁。有糖的甜，有奶的香。喝完一杯咖啡，感受那种百味含混的陈浓醇。Ang problema ngayon, ang mga mama ngayon, hindi tayo pwede kasama na sumunod na lang. Hindi pwede kong kasi yun. Hindi pwede kong kasi yun. Every time somebody is not very proud, it's just us calling for accountability, for responsibility from our national government, from our local governments, pare-pareho yun. is that pag nagreklamo ka, antay ka. Mm. It's not anti or pro. What is right for you may be okay ka lang sa patakaran nito. Sa, sa barangay namin, hindi mag a yun. Hindi lang sa barangay namin, mayayaman. Hindi lang sa barangay namin, mayayaman. Para bang para para yang provinsi para para yang lama eh. Okay, jen. Dua orang yang berpuas yang berpuas dengan makanan 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 yang berpuas